Hello, hello again. I'm here to talk today about abandonment, the second one. This is the second program. So how do you feel when, when someone leaves you? And you say, oh, he left me or she left me. Is there a sort of abandonment involved? Hmm. So where this abandonment comes from? As a child, we lived experiences that created a perspective. It was a perspective that you created as a child of abandonment or rejection or whatever it is you want. And this memory, when it happened, it got imprinted, let's put it this way, printed in at a cellular, energetic, emotional, and mental level. And so when you get to feel something like what happened before, the one activates, awakens, and then you feel the same thing. So it's not about the other person living, it's about your own one that just got activated. I'm saying this because um, I, I'm an expert on <laughs> abandonment, memories, and rejection, and betrayal. So that's why I'm here today to share a little bit of that. I want to honor the information. It comes from a book that I read that is called The Five Wounds That Keep You Away From Being Yourself. And the author is Liz Bourbeau. I, when I first read this information, I thought it was amazing. It helped me understand me, understand better what is, it was happening with me, with what I was feeling and reacting in certain ways. So that's why I'm here for, to share more about each of the ones. If you get a chance or you want to know more about it, the very first one is in the prior video and it's called, Have You Ever Felt? rejected that speaks about rejection. Today our subject, a topic, is abandonment. So how is it that or what could have happened in the past that we created this memory? Maybe as a child a new baby was gonna be born after you and you got maybe jealous because mom and dad don't have more attention. And then you might think that they are not going to love you anymore or they are not giving you the attention that you need. And mom and dad, the new baby is taking all the attention. So maybe you might feel abandoned by them. Also, maybe the parents had to work a lot or they had to be absent because they were traveling. And so one, when this situation happened, the kid or you as a child maybe felt like um, I, my mom or my dad abandoned me. And that's the perspective you created. And also it could be that mom and dad worked a lot and they had to leave you at the daycare every day or with grandma or with your grandparents. Oh, they had to go do something and they left you for a week or at the hospital because they couldn't stay that night or whatever it was that you felt like they left you, then the memory, uh, that was the moment where you could have, have created this memory within you. Also, when parents don't have a lot of time for their kids, kids feel like, my parents are absent, so a sort of a you feel abandoned. And it's like a survival thing that happens here that goes deeper, but I'm not gonna talk about that today. Also, you can create this um, perspective when one of the parents died, for example, um, or someone died, someone that was very important for you that you felt loved, and then maybe that person died and then you feel abandoned. So that could have been many of the options where you could have created this memory, this perspective that is attracting now into your life 
experiences of abandonment. So the memory gets activated when you get to feel kind of the same um, feeling of abandonment. So everyone has got some threats, and I'm gonna talk about that in an instant. For example, physically, they are also skinny, but the difference, difference between the rejection and the abandonment is that the body of the rejection is more toned and the body that has the wound of abandonment is less toned. So that's the difference between them because they are similar but not the same. Uh, there is also a difference between rejection and, uh, and abandonment. Rejection is that I don't want you and abandonment is that I leave you. So they are similar, but not the same. But we can actually have them both. Maybe, maybe because this wound happens with the parent of the opposite gender. In rejection, it was the same gender. So I feel rejected if I'm a girl, if I'm a girl from my mom. And in this case, if I'm a girl, I feel abandoned by, by my father, maybe. So it's the opposite gender. I feel abandoned by the opposite gender. If I'm a boy, I might feel abandoned by my mother. Or we can have both. We can feel, maybe I can feel rejected by my mother and abandoned by my father as a girl. Or if I'm a boy, I can feel rejected by my dad and abandoned by my mother. So that's how it works. So physically, that's how it is. They are skinny and their eyes show a lot of, they have, they have big eyes, but they show a sort of sadness. So I'm giving you all of this insert information so you can have some self observations on maybe that applies to me. <laughs> so here I am. As a kid, the person loves attention because they need to feel that they are taken care of. They need to feel attention and that others help you or that you are the helper maybe. So the person with abandonment as a child used to love when others help them. What else? As an adult, as an adult then they tend to have the same need. I need attention and sometimes to get this attention you become the victim because if you are the victim for you <laughs> so others are going to look to you oh poor thing this is happens over and over and she she leaves one and then the other one comes you know and so you usually the person with the wound of abandonment always tends to get, or not always, but it's a tendency to get into situations that, that make them the victim. And that's part of the unconscious, of course, this is all unconscious plan for them to get attention. So if I come, they are like, they are like drama. They, they love drama. They, when they live an experience, they exaggerate it when they tell it. So they can, what? Call the attention. And people say, wow, that was a lot. And so people turn around to see the person. And that's pretty much what it's looking for because this person is always in need of love and attention. Now, if you tell your story and they don't pay attention to you, my gosh, you feel abandoned you feel like no one loves you and no one cares. <laughs> so that's pretty much the, the game that the abandonment plays. They somehow feel like they are not loved, that people don't care enough, that they don't, they just feel no loved. They need to feel seen and recognized and I, I, need, I need help. They are somehow needy. So their mask is called the dependable because they, they get, they need, need, they need, they need to be dependable of someone. So usually this person 
usually looks for um, people that tend to be more controlling. So it's a codependency that I'm not going to talk about that, but I might talk about that later because <laughs> that's a, a different subject topic that I like to talk about is the games that we play between all of these uh, people that have different ones. Okay, so emotionally, they are like roller coasters. They, maybe they just are telling you a story and they are laughing and all of a sudden you turn around and they are crying out of the blues. You don't know how, but their mood goes up and down with no reason. And they have this situation that they don't like being alone. They like, like the rejection. They love being alone. These ones don't like being alone. Their biggest fear is to feel loneliness or that someone dies because that's the worst that can happen to them. And that's why they hold situations that are very unconscious like this, for instance. For instance, I'm just going to give an example. I'm going to just imagine that it is like that or no. It's not imagine because I've, I've seen it here, but I'm going to say, uh, just give it as an example. Maybe a woman is being the victim of abuse. And this person rather stay being the victim of abuse than, than just imagining that the other person leaves them because then they will feel abandoned and it'll be harder for them to deal with the, with the abandonment than with the abuse. So they tend to get blind to those realities because they don't want to feel abandoned. But that's, that's, that's how they are always looking for situations that somehow keep them being those victims because they really need, it's a need of that. So it's a, it's a codependency between the one who's abusing and the one that is being abused. And I'm not going there because that's not the subject today, but yeah, that. <laughs> so they always need support, help, and um, they need, for example, to be approved by others. They need to ask others the opinions of what do you feel I should do, what to do on, on, on what you think would be better for me, and so they can feel loved. If they get these advices or attention, they feel loved. That's, that's how the game plays. They are always asking for gui gui um, guidance, and, but no, not always follow because they, um, they really don't need that help. What they need is someone to kind of recline Actually, you see these people, like usually they, when they are by the door, for example, they are reclining because they need to recline on others. They don't need help, but they need to be kind of reclining, not leaning, but reclining. Like I need support. Like it's that sort of, I need you to pay attention to me. So in groups, this a uh, person with this wound is one of the followers. It follows. Doesn't have to take the role, he or he or she doesn't have, want to take the role of leading because if you lead, then you don't get the attention that you want. So you really want others to take care of you. So you you rather stay in the follow the followers uh, instead of in the leading. The expressions they use are like this like the victim. I cannot take this anymore. This is too much. I have to do it all myself. They left me alone. You know, so those are many of the expressions they use. And they use a lot the word alone. Alone. I have to do it alone. Or, or me, I have to do it all my myself. 
it's so like, oh, poor me. So they use these expre expressions and um, that had to do with abandonment somehow because they say, oh, they left me alone. It's like abandoned, you know, or, or I cannot take it anymore. You know why they, I, they use this a lot? Because they take a lot of responsibilities that are not theirs because they want to also somehow call the attention by helping, but they accept things they don't want to do. They just want some sort of approval or attention. And so these responsibilities like, oh, they left me here doing all of this, but usually the person was the one who accepted that deal, but they just don't see it that way. They don't recognize it, let's put it this way. So they, then, they play, then they play the game of the victim. Also, these people tend to get sad when people leave, even if it's a party. The party's over, oh, the party's over. I don't want you to leave. <laughs> so it's a sort of, if the party's over, it's like everybody's gotta be gone and I feel like I don't want that because they feel abandoned. So the same, every little, like see these little situations that you wouldn't think they matter, they do matter for a person with the wound of abandonment. And also they tend to blame on others uh, things that happen to them. They say, oh, it's because of you. Because you're not giving me attention, because you're not giving me the love, because I, I did this for you and you're not helping me. So they tend to blame others to keep them being the victim. They have also difficulties relating to the other gender, of course, because that's where the problem, the root of the problem started when they felt abandoned by the opposite gender. So as an adult, they have these problems relating to the opposite gender. And they, if something happens there, they usually think to think it's the other ones, not you. So that's another thing. Um, also, since they cannot be happy, they really cannot be happy because when they are happy, it's like people turn around from you because you're happy. But I want people to look at me again, so I need to sabotage my happiness to become again that center of attention, to become again the victim. So it's an unconscious self-sabotaging of your happiness that is constantly happening. Many of them uh, decide not to have kids because if you have kids, maybe your kids will take the attention from your partner. Or maybe if you have kids, uh, my partner is not gonna love me anymore. Or the, it's just like they have this unconscious fear because it's all unconscious, not that they don't want to, it's just all unconscious. I want you to understand that all of this happens in an unconscious level. But when they have kids, they want those kids to be somehow dependable. They love uh, to be these kids to be dependable as well because at least my kids you know, I get this attention or that's why somehow there is something that is very unconscious that happens there that I will talk in another um, pro, uh, video about them, about this topic. So they eat a lot, but they don't gain weight just as the rejection one. And it is because they need more all the time. I need more attention. I need more love. So they don't get satisfied. So they eat a lot because it's a, it's a way of trying to satisfy that emptiness that, that they feel they need. And actually, even sexually, they, they feel like I need more, more, more. And, and it's just that never satisfy of with, with what they have. And so that's one of the things that also applies here. Physically, when you have these wounds and they are so unconscious and you cannot resolve them, they might affect your body. And 
create some illnesses, for example. And some of the illnesses that this one might somatize or can bring to the body is related, for example, to the lungs, asthma or bronchitis, because asthma, like the lungs, are related to, the, to sadness in the Chinese medicine. And it's like you have this um, sorrow and the victims have this sorrow. It's like, oh, I'm so sad. And then this, that means that it's affecting your lungs. So they might have problems with asthma and bronchitis, for example. Also with diabetes or hypoglycemia, just as, as the rejection, because they need more sugar. I need to satisfy that love. I need more love. I need more love. So they eat a lot and that can take them to maybe diabetes. They have also digestive problems. They, they eat a lot, they don't gain weight, but they have digestive problems because sometimes it's hard for them to metabolize those emotions of pain or whatever it is that they feel they need that they don't get, that I don't understand why that happens or why it happens to me. So it's like a sort of a lack of digestion here. And so they have digestive problems. Another one is um, short sight. They, because sometimes they have uh, eye problems because they don't want to see the reality. They want to see it their way because they feel it's that way. And as I said before, they rather have abuse than abandonment. So they don't want to see the reality as it is. And they might have eye problems as well. Migraine, I don't understand why it's that way. I want it to be my way, but it's not. So they get migraines maybe. And when they get abandoned, for example, they can get hysterical. Like really for them, it's like that, those tantrums that you see, it's like, oh, why this person reacted this way? And it's because the abandonment can be very hard for them to handle. So all of this that I'm saying also can help us be more compassionate of others because sometimes if we don't hold that memory or that wound we cannot understand how the other one is feeling so that was my share for today my intention with this is that you can have a self-observation and see if any of these threats apply to you because my idea with this is that you can start identifying what is that memory that is affecting you specifically, because once you identify it, you can also identify where it came from. Because if you leave that as a challenging experience as a child, maybe it's because something in the past on your ancestors wasn't resolved and you got to live the same thing because we choose patterns with the same one and someone is trying to resolve that and if you don't see it then it will continue to your next generations and we want to stop that for for the benefit of all because the healing of one is the healing of all and that's why also that's why i'm also sharing this information so I hope you get the most you could from this. The next one I'm gonna talk about is betrayal. And so if you like this, it's going to be a series of five videos. If you like it, please like it. <laughs> and if you think that someone is living this and don't see themselves maybe you can share that to that person say listen i just saw this video maybe you should see it uh, please share please subscribe to my channel to support me that way i'm i'm looking forward to grow because my intention is to share content to help people grow emotionally and spiritually and not only because of one, but because of all. <laughs> so that was all it for today. I'll see you next time when I come to talk to you about the trail.
Have a blessed day. Mm-hmm.